where I'm going is something which maybe a lot of you are already there in terms of intuitive knowing about the fundamental nature of consciousness. But what I've been working on is how that actually begins to fall out from modern physics. We all know we're conscious and there's no way to explain it in science. It's easier to explain probably how the universe evolved from the Big Bang or whatever it was that set it off all the way through to the present day. That's easier to explain than why any of us ever has a single thought in our mind. How does something as immaterial as consciousness ever arise from something as unconscious as matter? We assume that matter is unconscious and therefore our brain cells are unconscious and all the chemical electrical activity that goes on is unconscious. How does consciousness come out of it? That's what's often called the hard problem of consciousness. I actually don't think it's a hard problem at all. I think it's an impossible problem. <laughs> it's actually we're asking the wrong question. And the reason is we're stuck in the wrong paradigm. And that meta paradigm, the current meta paradigm, says the real world is the material world. This is the real stuff. Space, time, and matter are primary. But there's an anomaly in this worldview, and that is consciousness itself. And it's a real anomaly because it cannot be doubted. We can't doubt the fact we're conscious. And it cannot be explained. The fundamental assumption that is not questioned in the current meta paradigm is that matter is insentient. We assume that matter is totally unconscious. And that's where the problem arises. How does consciousness come out of something that is totally, absolutely unconscious? So the alternative meta-paradigm that I've been exploring is much more, another way of putting it, is consciousness is a fundamental quality of the cosmos, as fundamental as space, time, and matter. Actually, that's not true, as we'll see in a moment. But I'm talking to more conservative audiences, <coughs> I'd like to start them off with the fact that consciousness is, is as fundamental as space, time, and matter. Where we're going... Where we're going is to see that it's more fundamental. But this is a halfway stage to take the mind along safely for the moment <laughs> before we get down to the, the real stuff. Okay, there's a, there's a couple of ways in which consciousness is more fundamental, is primary. The first is something I've touched upon already, that consciousness is in everything. We see it in not just human beings. We assume that dogs are experiencing beings. Consciousness is there all the way through. So that I believe what's happened as life has evolved, it isn't that life reached a certain stage, a nervous system or whatever it was, and then something magic happened. At that stage, something, it really is magic in modern science, something magic happened, and out of inert matter, suddenly mind appeared out of nowhere. I think consciousness, in essence, subjectivity, like the interior world is always there. And what has happened as the complexity of the physical world has evolved, so the images, the forms that appear in consciousness have also grown richer and more and more complex. This is the first way consciousness is primary. Consciousness is in everything. And the second bit is the opposite is also true. Everything is in consciousness. By which I mean... Whatever we experience, whatever we know, is actually an appearance in the mind. We know what is going on is that light comes in through the eyes, hits the back of the retina, triggers electrochemical impulses which travel down nerve fibers to the back of the brain, where the brain very cleverly, in about a tenth of a second, puts it all together and says, this is what it looks like out there. The brain creates its own image of what is going on out there and very cleverly ties that in with the sound it hears, the feeling of sitting in the seat, whatever else, and creates this wonderful three-dimensional, hi-fi, surround sound, touchy-feely virtual reality which we live in. 
light does not exist in the world of space, time, and matter. So what do we make of this thing called the constant speed? I put speed in quotes deliberately. What we observe as speed, I don't think is speed at all. When I observe a light beam traveling from you know, the back of the room to my eye, in space-time, the beginning and end of that light beam are the same. Space-time is bent that they are the same. In my frame of reference, I stretch out that zero interval <laughs> into space and time. And I always stretch out 186,000 miles of space for every second of time. And if I'm moving very fast, I stretch out that much. Moving slower that much. Really slow, I stretch out that much. So I don't think C is a speed at all. It's the constant ratio of manifestation of space and time. For every 186,000 miles of space that appears, one second of time appears. Planck's constant, the quantum of action, it's called Planck's constant, and here it is. <coughs> For those of you who love zeros, very, very small, but it's not energy. Energy is erg. This is erg seconds. It's not actually energy. So every single photon of light is an identical unit of action. The normal view of what happens with light is something like that. A photon goes from the point of emission to the point of absorption. From light's point of view, space and time are so warped that the point of emission, the point of absorption are coincident. And the photon is an exchange of action between two points. It's an interaction between two points which are, from its point of view, coincidence there isn't a transmission across space and time. Space and time collapse, there is the exchange of an action. From light's point of view, from our point of view, it's different. From our point of view, it seems to cross space and time. And so we say, well, if light got from here to there, how did it get there? It must have traveled somehow. Did it travel as a wave or did it travel as a particle? And sometimes we look at it, it travels as a wave. Sometimes we look at it, it travels as a particle. That's because we have stretched out the zero interval into space and time and then try to answer the question from that frame of reference. <laughs> if you look at it from light's frame of reference, and I think the only real way to look at light is from light's own point of view, <laughs> not from our material point of view, it doesn't need to be a wave or a particle because it doesn't go anywhere. So where, we, where we're getting to is sensory forms are in the mind. Color, shape, sound, matter is a construct in the mind. Space and time are part of the framework within which the mind interprets its experience. Wave and particle are just models of the mind. It comes back to what Whitehead said. These are just qualities in the mind which we mistakenly assume apply to the external world. They don't. Out there we just have perturbations in the absolute. Which we, which consciousness congeals into this material world we see and then believe in. The same is true I think also of causality. Causality is a construct in the mind, something else that can't was playing with, and again, Jung looked into this. That we think in a causal way, but that doesn't mean the external world has to behave in a causal way. And we think in terms of locality. And what we're now discovering is, what physics is finding out, is the actual world out there is a non-local world. It's very, very, very weird, as Fred was pointing out, very, very weird. It's only weird when we insist on thinking that the way we experience it is the way it is. <laughs> and in between the two, we have light. <laughs> light isn't part of the physical world, it seems. It isn't part of the world of space, time, matter. It seems to be the first manifestation of the absolute, whether in in the external world, 
or within our minds is light. Again, in the mystical experience, those deep levels of consciousness, light comes up a lot. People talk about light, the light of consciousness, the inner light, the divine light, seeing the light. 